Well, we're going to talk about climate change, hysteria. Martin, is there climate change hysteria in the world? You know what? The more I see all this hysteria about the climate going on, the more I can see that people are so deceived. Yes, um, um, personally, of course, I believe that they don't take everything into account. No. They don't take chemtrails into account. They don't take harp technology into account. They don't take uh, supernatural activity mm -hmm. into account. Whatever you want to call it, there's more than meets the eye. And I always find it so interesting that they say, you know, this is the hottest year forever. And then you get an old newspaper and it was just as hot 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? No, it shows you that people have to start realizing. That's why we, we're like a broken record. Yes. Every now and we're carrying on on the same things. Climate change, digital identity, all this. But it's, it's if you repeat a lie often enough, Eventually, people will start believing it, right? And that's the, the, the sad part. Even the church starts getting on the bandwagon. And then you're not um, alert anymore or sensitive to see what's going on. Correct. And, and if the church gets onto that bandwagon, particularly our one, you should say, excuse me, we have a message to bear, a three angels message. And this soapbox is irrelevant except in the context of the third angel's message. Mm. If, if your message is in the context of the third angel's message, then fine. But if you're climbing onto the bandwagon and joining the hysteria, when all the reputable climatologists are saying yeah. this is a lot of nonsense, then I'm afraid then you've been hoodwinked. Yeah, because once you don't see that part, you won't be looking for where's the deception? Yes. You'll just take it as it is and, oh, this is just part of what it should be. Yes. So let's look at some yeah. climate change hysteria. I'm really quite bored with it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be with it for quite a while until the end. Until it finally culminates in the third angel's message. That's it. And the lockdowns and the push for Sunday laws. Martin, how often have we read these verses? Well, I think it's a good idea to know this whole chapter by, uh, by heart. Well, I think uh, if we carry on like this, it should become a reality pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes. And these are just the beginnings of sorrows, which means it gets worse. So the good news is it's going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> and so coming back to what you said earlier, you should get used to this, even if you don't like it, because we're going to be sitting with this for a while. Yes. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. It's when we get to that point that we get into, into stress mode, right? And we'll be seeing today again. Are there talks? Are there, what was the precursors during the last two years of maybe telling you, okay, this is the way that they might implement it? And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I think they're doing a pretty good job on that one already. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Martin, could this become a reality within the church? I think it's already becoming a reality. Okay, don't go any further. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You know, Martin, that's, that's quite a heavy mouthful to swallow, right? At least there's a promise again. Yes, yes there, is, there is a solution. So why are we doing this? Because we have to be watchmen on the walls of Zion mm. and we have to see and identify the approaching danger. 